in one night nil actually i wouldn't say no actually it was let me not regret let me not rewrite history it was a 9-0 performance we absolutely bad southampton as soon as they got a player sent off which doesn't always happen sometimes a player gets sent off for the opposing team and it galvanizes them and then you know the moment they kind of hang on until the half time it then casts doubt on the team with the advantage and then you never know they score a goal on the break and then you're kind of bemoaning the fact that you know i'm hitting your head against the wall how do you lose against 10 men so it's not always easy to finish teams off when they're 10 men especially at the level where we're at the premier league right every team essentially is playing for something i think if you're facing 10 men and you're real madrid and you're facing you know alicante or you know celta vigo you're definitely gonna win right because you know they're just gonna roll over and lie down uh, lie down and roll over sorry but in the in the premier league every team has something to play for so they can't afford just to throw away points um even a performance is needed right that's going to help them for the next match so um yeah really happy again a, a very wide range of players scored great performances throughout i'd probably say luke shaw might be in my mind the match even though he only played the first half um, i thought he was really good um social decision to drop pogba or give him a rest kind of paid off basically we were um we kind of got through the game scot free um no pun intended scott mctominay scored a pretty decent goal uh van der Beek came on but was it was a bit too quiet for my liking i still think he's a he's a fantastic player i just think he needs to come in and exert more influence on the game and get on the ball a bit more he kind of tends to run into the gaps and behind where he thinks he's going to get found by his teammates like he did at ajax but we don't play that kind of football and we don't really have the players to do that apart from pogba to kind of find those balls over the top and get him in so he needs to kind of get on the ball a bit more um but obviously the ability is still there Martial scored a couple of goals which was good Cavani scored a goal too that's good Rashford scored a goal that's good right Daniel James scored a goal that's even good for the squad morale it's all good um going forward so yeah 9-0 11 points now in Man City can we win the league probably not I'm still I'm still not sold on the idea of us winning the league with this coach and with this collection of players it's just too mismatched um the coach is just too mediocre it just doesn't make any sense um if it does happen then it'll be one of the only times i can imagine or i can think of in recent years where a coach who everybody kind of agrees isn't elite wins the premier league with the players that we have as well we've got some great players don't get me wrong but i still think it's a little bit of a mismatch of a squad it doesn't really make sense um you look at the back line you look at our full backs we kind of lopsided not really the best on the ball um, Luke Shaw's obviously improved Aaron Masaka's doing the best he can for his abilities but then we play out the ball from the back um, Maguire is not really an 80 million pound center back he's good he's decent enough but he's not an 80 million pound center back definitely not a captain uh, of Man United um, level center back but hey it is what it is he doesn't have the good thing about him is that he's resilient he never gets injured for the most part he's always ever present but he doesn't really have much of a partnership with anybody really right he kind of plays with Lindelof then by sometimes uh, Solskjaer has somehow convinced himself that Lindelof is the best option from Bayern and Lindelof which I don't agree with I still would say Bayern is our best centre-back at the club I think he's even better than Harry Maguire but you know that's a conversation for another day um then we don't have a, a one world-class defensive midfielder so we always have to play a double pivot that's my interpretation maybe social just likes playing a double pivot i don't know maybe that's the case um if that is the case then you know uh, i question that so we don't have two we don't have one great defensive midfielder so we have to play two and the two that he usually tends to go for is Fred but but they're not really good on the ball so they lose possession a lot but they're decent at tackling then you've got up forward from there midfielders you've got what bruno fernandez who i don't really think as a midfielder i kind of count him as a what as a 10.5 as a 9.5 in terms of numbers um he gets in the box a lot and he should be really given the a free role to kind of do what he wants and have you know have a solid midfield base behind him but i guess we don't really have the bodies to do that at the moment and then you got rashford who you know can obviously be an incredibly clutch player but is incredibly erratic um doesn't really have a brain it seems like in terms of pass selection team seems to make way too many of the wrong choices but he, again like i said he always comes up clutch um you got greenwood who's still developing you got james who i don't think is good enough at this level um yeah there's still a bit of a mismatch Cavani and Martial competing for the number nine I guess Martial in my opinion is still the number one choice I would say but I like the fact that we've got a Cavani in our squad regardless so it's still a bit too mismatched and like I said I just don't think Skull Shark's that great of a coach man I just don't you know he kind of looks like the manager that's going to rely solely on transfers and if that's the case that's all well and good 
but we don't have the infrastructure at the moment to allow him to succeed that way. We don't have a sporting director. And so, you know, maybe we've got the transfers right recently, but I still don't think they're right. You know, we signed that Uruguayan kid and where's he? We signed Diallo and he didn't even start for Atalanta, right? It doesn't really make any much sense. Um, so there's still too many holes for me to be convinced that we're going to win the league. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to push. We're obviously going to have a good end of season. And again, like I said, the one credit you have to give Solskjaer is that, especially when you look at what's happening at Tottenham with Mourinho, he's done a great job, man. He's really lifted the spirits of the entire squad. Everyone seems really happy. Everyone's really up for it. Everyone seems like they like being around each other. They're enjoying playing whatever style football that we're playing in at the moment. I don't know what it is, but wherever we're playing, they seem to be enjoying it. Um, they're all rooting for each other. Um, the atmosphere just seems way more fun and jovial and just they seem like they're really having a whale of a time. And as much as it annoys me seeing Solskjaer do that weird green thing that he does at the end of the game, I generally think that happiness and bubbliness has been such a cathartic and refreshing experience from the drab, dreary nature of Jose Mourinho. You're sort of seeing it now with Mourinho at Spurs where they're sort of faltering and they've kind of got a bit of a bad run. You're seeing that bad side of, you know, Jose Mourinho come back out again and you're reminded of, you know, the horror that we had to put up with when he was at United. So if, if anyone deserves any credit, it's it's definitely so shark in terms of improving the overall mood but i still think in terms of the clutch moments the big moments you look at what happened in champions league that was no fluke we had four games to qualify basically or three we only needed one point for those three we could stumbled all the way through um really odd team selections and substitutions he's learning but again he's been in the management for 10 plus years prior to coming to united right um it just doesn't make any sense you don't necessarily turn into a world-class manager after that long period of time there's be some sort of evidence yeah Yes, the Norwegian league titles are there, but I'm just not convinced that he is the guy. And again, the team also is, isn't exactly the best in the league, I'd say, in that regard. It's good, but I don't think it's the best. And of course, Man City, you know, they've got a world-class manager. They've got a team that is essentially stacked full of talent in each position. Um, they've got a style of play that seems to be ingrained in the players. Maybe we don't have as much experience as them playing that system um, that we have at the moment, but it's still more recognisable. Um, I don't know. It's just... I just don't see it. I would like to be proven wrong, but I'm I'm still enjoying the ride. Like I said um a few times on here, I'm enjoying the I'm enjoying not being outside the top four and having to you know cry every week about us trying to beat Burnley to get fifth or something. Right? I'm pr I'm I'm happy with that, and I'm sure at the end of the season we'll be comfortably within the top four. Maybe with a trophy under our arms. Who knows? Uh, maybe two. Let's see what happens. But yeah, so far so good.